Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Coach Insider. My name is Ben. And I'm Chris. And let's start off with our socials, which <laughs> we forgot completely forgot. For the West Coast, episode. I got carried away. Uh, By the way, like, share, comment, do all that like follower stuff. We've had a few people actually commenting to us, Chris, which we need to talk about. A few really eager fans. And if you do want to um, donate to us, you can donate to us uh, on our Twitch stream. We've got a donation section. You can jump and on there. That's a segue. Get Talking a of jumping on things, uh, facebook.com forward slash... SC Insider. Yep. Uh, you got that right. <laughs> first time. Yes. And uh, Twitter, we are SC underscore Insider underscore. On Twitch, we are twitch.tv forward slash SC underscore Insider. And on YouTube, uh, we are Supercoach Insider. Just search for us. And we've got uh, 14 episodes currently on YouTube. We will yes. be putting more um, up. I'm not doing much tomorrow, so I'll be putting probably these two up tomorrow. And Excellent. probably just dumping all of that. Uh, That's it. Dumping, yeah, all, all the audio, uh, I did some while I was away on Heyman, so I've got the files, the rest of the files are here, so I'm going to grab those and do those as well over the weekend before I leave to Heyman on Monday, so I will get everything up for these 18 teams, Well done, we'll sir. be all schmick and done. Uh, today we are covering the Western Bulldogs, apologies again if my voice breaks or I need to lose it at some point. Uh, okay, so they have the fifth easiest draw. Do they? The 13th hardest, the fifth easiest draw. Their double ups are Collingwood, Geelong, Brisbane, Frio, and Carlton. Nice. So not too bad there. So Frio, Carlton, Brisbane. What more can you want? <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, that's pretty good. Um, they have one five day break, and they have three six. Can day we preface breaks. this by so, saying uh, from the start they're set up pretty well? Great. What's Bevo doing? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I can't try. Honestly, I'm just. You know, you, you, know, you know what infuriates me even more, Chris? What, what does, mate? I can't even send him an email. He keeps changing his address because I don't. I don't know what he's doing. That is. What, is, what is he doing? Who knows? Is he on the Gmail? Is he on the Hotmail? Is he I, on the Facebook? I don't know, mate. I, I can't get a hold of him. I really don't know. Anyway, um, okay, so they have minimal travel and lots of games at Marvel, which suits them down to a T because they definitely love to play at Marvel. What a great name, Marvel Stadium. Uh, so they have a really good start, I believe, so I'm really keen on the dogs for this reason. So yes, they have a couple of hard sides, uh, but starts off, they've got Sydney, Hawks, the Suns, Collingwood, Carlton, oh, yeah, Frio, not all those are easy beats, Richmond, mate. Lions. I said some aren't, <laughs> right? But you take the wins with there, so yes, yeah, Sydney. Where's, where's the Brisbane easy beat in there? Oh, it's at the end here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the mate. Lions, Brisbane Lions. <laughs> Do you even know the game? No, it's my first time. Chris, oh, by the way, this is serious business. I really at, appreciate it if you didn't interrupt this like I did for those the last at, one. <laughs> for those at home, I actually had a business meeting stay at the Gold Coast, and the entire Richmond team was staying at the exact same hotel where the business meeting was. And Dustin Martin walked past me. I didn't offer him a coffee because I'm not an idiot. Chris walked around for so long he got lost in. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Very nice. Um, they're actually staying at the uh, Royal Pines Resort on the Gold Coast. It's literally just right down the road from Carrara, which is the Gold Coast, uh, the Metricon. Um, and they've got a big training facility there. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah right. Well done, Richmond. They looked fit. Good. And on to the Bulldogs. Anyway. Uh, okay, so Sydney, obviously not too not too easy. But then Hawks, without Titch, probably not bad for them. Uh, the Suns. Definitely early on. So we're talking about a McRae possibly going a 170 in the first three rounds. Um, then you've got Collingwood, so not an easy game, obviously. But in that Sydney game, McRae probably takes the Hewitt tag. Yeah. You'd say. So that's... Um, that's and then a Howe. Yeah, but that, but you get rid of those two. Suns. Collingwood, yes, yeah, not going to be easy. But then Carlton, Frio, Richmond and Lions. It's not too bad. What, I, what I'm thinking, though, from a pure score perspective is that that could really impact his initial starting price. It could, except for the fact that you see the Suns and Carlton both being within the first five games. Yeah, so how much will he go down? Yeah. Maybe 30, 30 grand? It's not worth it. I'm he, holding. He would need to go down close to $100,000 for you to be yeah. like, okay, I've, I've made the And right I think with those, with uh, that three grand average will go up because of the Suns. Yep. And then, yeah, after that, what, he will Mike Collingwood, yeah, not so bad, and then Carlton, bang up again, Fremantle, bang up again. So look, I think it's not too bad of a start as far as starts go. Yeah. Um, they have a great super coach finals. So you're looking around the finals. You're looking at Saints, Frio, Lions, and Essendon. Not bad again, particularly when you're looking at scoring. Um, they share uh, so around they have around 12 by. So they share it with Essendon, Fremantle, Hawks, Power, and Saints. So it's the early buy, mm -hmm. which is um, obviously not ideal for starting. It's good for upgrading. So I mean, I can see, and this is what happens every it happened yeah. last year as well as they had the early buy. We, I traded to McLean. McLean dropped off a cliff, and I, 
I actually am of the opinion that um, the way that they set up their year is in two sections. Yep. So people get role changes mid-season. To take the pressure off? I, no, I think it's to try and get the best out of the team over 22 rounds instead of... That's what I mean, take the, pre- take the yeah, pressure yeah. off them out of that round. Um, which Interesting is, theory. It's really annoying because if it happens again this year, that's proof that that's his system, right? Yeah. That means you can't pick him ever. Yeah, so they, they go they go hard out for 12 weeks and then they get backed off, put into another role. Someone yeah. else comes in and goes hard out for another 12 weeks. Yeah, or so you know, not selecting Dunkley instead of McLean for the first 12 weeks and then waiting until that buy and then jumping on the other one that's probably... Oh, that would be hilarious. Price. If someone does that this year, gold to them. Um, in the off-season, they did lose Dalhouse and Roughhead, but they gained Lloyd um, from Richmond. So, yep. interesting there, I not think too that, much. I think the Lloyd's a... a a really good AFL player, just could never get consistent games yep. um, at Richmond, of course, with their depth. And the way that they set their forwards with the Mosquito fleet, essentially, completely changed the way that they're... And you could never make good food choices overseas, apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor fella. Uh, okay, so let's go with rookies to note, because there are quite a few um, for the Western Bulldogs. So I'm not just going to ramble on like Chris does and giving you 10 people that aren't relevant. Um, <laughs> I keep stoking you every day with that. Uh, okay, Bailey Smith, number one, he's a 180,000 midfielder, 185 centimetres, 83 Ks, so he's ready for senior footy, and he's exactly the type of player the Bulldogs love, so he's hard, a hard runner who's quick, wins plenty of the ball, and uses it well with his clean hands in contested situations. So he looks like an absolute beast, uh, problem is he's 180k, and we're going to have a lot more cheaper options. The other problem is he's still injured at the moment, they're nursing him back to health, so, um... He'll probably play JLT. He just hasn't had a full preseason, so yep, so especially being a first year player, I'm I'm not really sold on that as a as an option at all. Could be an upgrade. Uh, has battled a sore Achilles, but it's expected to be okay uh, this month, which puts him in frame to impress during JLT. So it's a watch this space. Achilles, are, like Achilles, are, they're tough injuries, and he's a tall mid, isn't he? Achilles, Achilles. Is there no one else? Uh, 185. Yeah, Achilles is tough them. for people. Yeah, a six six oh, foot. Yeah. Nah, Achilles is really tough because they've got so much weight on there, and especially what eighty five kilo, eighty three kilos already. I'm not sure that he's going to be able to play early. Yeah, so I don't think he's going to be in a lot of Plus, people's calculations. Like I said, one. ranked behind Sam Walsh for disposals. So if I think it, you're starting with Sam Walsh. Yeah, yeah. You're and not starting if he with come, if he comes in later on and goes bang, then you can always bring him in at that point. I agree. Uh, Riley West is 117k mid. Um, so the um, Ross Smith, so the Calder Cannons coach, yep. says the son of Bulldogs champion Scott West is ready to play in his first season. He's very mature for an 18-year-old. Averaged 19 disposals, 6 tackles, and a goal in TAC Cup. Yep. And apparently he is linked to the hard nut, like Jack Viney, which so is what they've put it as. Likened, so worth, so. Yeah, likened to two. So, yep. and, um, yeah. I think he's pretty much a good option if he debuts. I'm not sold on him just yet, but... This guy could come in and fill that void, particularly if Libert doesn't actually get an inside role and they want to go with a young kid to try and do some work. Uh, how I, they, I don't how see they it, line up round ones? Yeah, how, yeah up exactly. There. So, um, uh, just on the Twitch here as well. Um, so we've got. Uh, could you start McRae and Bont? Um, well, you could McRae and Bont. I wouldn't, but you could. Mm. I I would I well, would probably only start McRae out of that. I, I just don't know. Again. We've had this, and we've said this many times on our other podcasts, Bond and Pelly should be a starting midfielder. He's the best midfielder they have in that team. I don't know what you're doing if you're not starting him in midfield. That's just yeah. my... I don't know I'm not I, an AFL coach. When but. I hear that, I get happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? McCray and Bond, you're like, I'm happy, uh, but then... Are I'm those both. happy tissues or sad tissues? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say this expression, but it's like, you know, this guy says to his girlfriend, uh, tell, me, tell me something that'll make me happy and sad at the same time. And she's like, you've got the biggest dick. Of all your mates. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh, what? <laughs> uh, okay, Jordan. Wow. Jordan's uh, sweet, sweet, sweet Jordan. He's a ruck. He's 102K. Mature age recruit. Gets his chance at the dogs. He's a 20-year-old. Uh, great season for North Adelaide in the Sample. He's a versatile big man who can play forward. Mm-hmm. And he's a chance to get a game in a side with limited ruck options. So he could be an option. Yep. Uh, who knows how they're going to line up. Fair enough. Uh, but he's a little bit older, a bit more mature. Um, Ben Kavara. Yeah, I think he's likely to forward one seventeen k. Genuine feel good stories. Pretty much, they called him out at pick forty five. So he's a twenty two year old. Yep. Uh, won the Morish Medal. 
in the VFL as a midfielder, but switched to a small forward role in his past couple of seasons. Uh, and he also won the goal kicking for Williamstown uh, both years. Yep. So he's kicked 34 goals this year. Has enough strings to his bow now. Average 97 super coach points a game. So for me, if, uh, he's, if he's playing... If he plays JLT and, and scores 260s, he's locked into my forward line. Yes. Probably on field. Uh, next one is Will Hayes, uh, recruiter from Footscray VFL. He is a 117k mid, pick 78, uh, average 97 in the 2018 Supercoach. Ooh, okay. Um, so he led the Footscray for disposals, 26 per game. He had uh, 10 contested possessions per game and on his way to winning the best and fair. So he's a 22-year-old... Uh, son of a horse trainer, David Hayes, noted for his endurance, finishing third in the comp for inside 50s and second front contested possessions. So Is that for all of our horse punters out there? Yeah, a little bit. So, Excellent. look, um, no. I think not too bad to note, but they with those young kids, it could easily be these young, young guys could actually get a game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, especially with Bevo, because you don't know what he's doing, and he likes to reward hard work. And he also likes to play kids if, if they're good enough. Yeah. He won't play them if they if he doesn't believe they're ready, but if they're no. good enough, he'll put them in. And he'll give them a role. Yeah. So I think he's pretty good like that. Uh, premiums, obviously, the McRae. Uh, if you take out his injured 51 game in round 13, his Trovage is 131.27, which makes him the highest super coach. He's the highest super coaching averaging play, true average player for the yep. year. Over, and, over Brody Grundy and Tom Mitchell. So. And his last five rounds were 138.8 super coach points. So... For me, he averaged great 120. Great option in my draft. I picked him up second round last year. That was, no, it was great. later. I think we second or third round. Third round. Dude, it was so good. It was a the, steal. I, I remember actually the person before me like went <laughs> past him to pick the next person and I'm like, huh, I, I'll, I'll get Jack McCray. I think you went like Matt Crouch <laughs> to Tom Rockcliffe. No, that was my second round, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, to, yeah, Ron, yeah. to Rockcliffe and then you happen to get back and get McCray. You're yeah. Like, oh, McCray's still there. Yeah. Ended up being alright for me. Yes. Um, so, McRae, I'm really big on him. Um, He's in my team now, but, I mean, obviously with Mitchell gone, that opens up that spot. But uh, whether or not I pick him will really vary I, on I want to pick him, but then I'm like, can I trust him to back it up again? Uh, look, even if he doesn't, I think he'll probably still be somewhere between 115 and 120. I don't think he's gone back down. You don't reckon he'll go down. below 110? No, I don't think he's gone all the way back down there. <clears throat> it, it will depend on... There's two things that are going to happen to him this season, and that's he'll, he attracts a lot more attention. Yeah. So, I mean, re, game one and two, he's going to get tagged. Um, however, he, he was tagged last year, and he still only missed the ton twice. Yeah. Still and one of them was a 98. Um, so, yeah, okay. Um, if he's getting tagged, it doesn't mean much. Yeah. He can still rack up the ball inside. When he played his really good game, I'm talking his 130s, 140s, 150s, he was he was free to just float out the back of the pack, get an easy handball, and then and, and get a clearance. Like, Or he would be getting the clearance himself. He played brilliantly that way, but they just looked for him to distribute through midfield. I remember, I think it was a wet game. It might have been versus Sydney. He just got so, somebody. Wet yep. game. He just constantly got the ball. Yeah. And, like, clean possession in yeah, a wet game. I, and I, knew all, I was like... He's the only one, like, hitting... This guy targets. over here. It's um, crazy. He's super talented. Um, I think he can back it up. Uh, can, can he be the number one super coach player this year? I'm not sure about that. That's a tough ask. It's a tough ask. Yeah. But they've got an easier draw. But it could easily be, you know, Fife. It could be a Kelly. It could be... You know, yeah, could be I mean... Crips, Crips as well. There's no value in the pick. But, I mean, I think he can bank points in it. Yeah, I think you're definitely going to get something. I think it's a safer. Uh, he doesn't. I think only him and Danger only had two games, or and uh, yeah. Grundy, sorry, had two games under 100. Yeah, and before this year, I mean, a soft tissue injury is not normal for him either. He he was reliable for games, so he's yep. the only one out from the entire Western Bulldogs team. I would say that didn't change roles at all during the season, and maybe that's because he did get injured. So that four games off that he did have, you know, obviously wasn't running very much. Yep. Um, Bebo goes okay well we're not going to change your role but he's not really a true forward he only kicked eight goals I think last year the year before he kicked two um, so yeah I mean there's, there's, there's that as well consideration he's, he's probably not a forward he's just a midfielder um, the next premium we have Bontempelli 104 average mm-hmm. he's a 564k midfielder played a lot forward this year, I'm surprised. He probably was only just short of getting forward status. Yep. Uh, close. So, I mean, he is a big contested player in big moments, which is where he scores really well. I just wish they played him a lot more through the midfield. I'm wondering now, maybe with a fit Shaq in, a fit Boyd, you know, maybe he'll rest forward, but I'm hoping that there's enough tall timber 
that they might not actually need him there as much. Well, that's one of the biggest conjecture points that we have <clears> this <throat> year with the dogs is that you've got now, if if he does get back in midfield, now you've got Libba. What happens with Libba? Now, I cannot stand when Libba was playing forward either because he's not a forward at all, mm. at, in the slightest. One of the best clearance players in the competition. He's not a forward. He's just not. He doesn't play it, doesn't run the right lines. He's got no idea how to play there. And you've got Bont, who... Can play the forward. He's decent as a forward. He's pretty good, actually. So, what happens with him? I w- again, I would prefer to have him in midfield. But there's just too many questions. I- I- yeah. I'm not picking him in draft. I'll skip over him. Because oh, I just don't know... I'm keen. Like he'll, I mean, you'll still get he the same good. return, right? He'll yeah. Get what, oh, he'll yeah. Get 104. 104. Same, same. He'll get a similar return. Yeah, similar return. Just on a he, just lo- he looks good. Um, so, Swizzy said that uh, his other half score Scott West at the beach. Um, looks like he can still play. <laughs> so, must be a pretty fit lad. Um, we've also got uh, Shaki, Boyd, Gowers, Lloyd, Kavara all up forward. Yep. Sure, this it's time to play Dunkley and Bont in the guts. Yeah, oh, mate. We're preaching. I'm on your train. I'm on your train. Preaching. And uh, is Seb Ross or Yo this year's McRae, or do we just back McRae in again? I really like Seb Ross. <laughs> yeah. I'm go. I'm shooting for him, mate. I'm I, shooting I'll for take Yo over a Sebi, but. I, I think I think Yo's in the position where he can catapult. I don't think Seb's he's probably one step behind Yo, just in terms yeah. of his output. I think I well, think Seb's got he could probably go one ten this year. Well, it's funny because this, this time last year we were thinking maybe well some people were Bont and Pelly was going to take the next step. Yeah, it was Bont or Crips. But it's not Bont, his fault. No, no. It's Bont or Crips. Bont or Crips. Bont, yeah. Bont or Crips. Right. Crips went bang. Who's the better player? Bont. I, I agree. But Cripps gets contested I, I 100%. Cripps gets better ball. I rate Bonson so, Pelly way yeah, better. So now you have a tall forward line. Maybe if with some time in the mids, there's no reason why he can't average 114. Don't get butt hurt, you Cripps Ten. fans out there. Oh, I love Cripps. I love Cripps as well. And I he's just, just think that... So oh, buff. He's just a clearance yeah. machine. Gets his hands on the ball. He's good looking. He's a big it. boy. This guy. Loves and he's always tanned. What's up with that? He loves getting in the sun, bro. Oh, Unlike man. me, but in the shade. Look, like at his, perfectly... look at his singlet line over here. His hair. It is. Perfectly chiselled all the time. Just what's up with that guy? Who knows? He's the man of gods. I tell you what. <laughs> anyway, specimen. He's, he's uh, okay. So he yeah, is Greek. <laughs> Bontepelli keen on, but yeah, I'm keen to see preseason if he plays any more time in the mids. But then why are they going to in the preseason anyway? So they're just gonna throw him in there. Bevo's not gonna play him no, in that role. They'll just the round. It'll be round You're one. Not gonna know. It'll be round one. Surprise! Bont's in the midfield. That's it. Because he's not. Yeah, gonna, he's get, not gonna ruin him. Here's the thing. Pre-season. You get one chance. How much is Bont? Five sixty four. Five sixty four. He's the same price as Dane Beams. Yeah, it, like you, yeah. at that price, you, I don't. I can't do it. I can't justify the pick. If you want to take that plunge and you've got money on it, go for it. But I'm, I'm safer than that. The plunge. You're making it sound like it's shit. I, no, it's not. It's not that. It's That's just, what you take to the toilet. The you're, plunge. You're risking a, like a top. He's not going to be top ten mid, right? Like I don't know. Is he, he? he could. He could. If he's going to be, top, if you think he's going to be top ten. Lock him up. I had him in my top 10 last year. Nothing's changed. Except he wasn't in the top 10. No, he's still in my top 10 from last year. He just missed out. He barely Um, beat Pendles. Next one, Josh Dunkley. He's a forward mid. Average 95.1. He's 516K. Yep. Uh, He's 20 years old, so he's nice and young. Bevo likes him young. (laughs) Uh, Average 115.8 the last nine rounds. And 127.2 the last six rounds. And he obviously, he switched roles with McLean. This is case in point. In the JLT, mm. Dunkley came up and absolutely killed it playing midfield, right? Yep. Round one starts. I know that some people started Dunkley. He spuds it up the entire first half of the season because yeah, he's got a, he got a couple of, different role. A couple of 80s and stuff. I brought him in my draft side. He got yep. a couple of 80s. I think one, uh, like maybe 100 or 90 or something. The, but it was a bit up and down, up and down, up and down. Got rid of him. Yep. Someone else brings him in and he goes absolutely the on The guy can play Yep. The, the kid can play. Yep, pretty much. Uh, Toby McLean, so the, the, these two are pretty oh. much tick for tack. Swizz has just said, first bet, Crips versus Bont. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great bet. No, no, that's... Uh, uh, not for Supercoach. Uh, in, a, in a fight, I wouldn't... <laughs> Jeez, in a fight. Um, Bont would have those kangaroo reach. Yeah, gloves. Bont, Dusty and Beams all the same price. <clears throat> Most people thinking Dunkley or Devin Smith. Yeah, and they are. That's a, yeah. That's, yeah, it's true. I'm with you. I'm, I'm actually going lighter in my forward line because I, I don't... Those guys, I'm just not sold on and they're, they're very expensive. Um, So, Toby McLean, forward mid as well, 94.7 and he's 514k. So, yeah, same sort of price range. Average 111 the first 10 rounds. Average 81 the last 12 when they switched roles. Yeah, so, no wonder... I think the reason people... A, Dunkley, he went big. 
with some big scores. Yeah, which, scores. And it's at the end of the year, so it sticks in everyone's mind more. You know, Menka's like, oh, McLean's dropped off a hill. Dunkley's come out and gone bang. They literally really switched that. With, with a bigger ceiling, I reckon. Yeah. And now it's ever, in everyone's mind. That's yeah. what's fresh. Makes sense. So that, I think he'll be more popular. He will be twice as owned, I reckon, as McLean, based yep. on the freshness. But they, they both play the exact same role that just switched. So yep. be careful, because if the one comes out... And plays that role and then gets switched or Was it Lion versa? King? Be prepared. Who doesn't love the Lion King, by the way? Dun, dun. That live show, the Lion King. Amazing. Yeah, King, yeah, King. Anyway. Anyway, uh, Lockie the Seagull Hunter. Good old Lockie. Jeez, we got rid of him for... You know who's not playing inside this year? Lockie Hunter. <laughs> Guaranteed. Guaranteed, 100%. You know, he's not winning the... He won the best and fairest there. Yeah. He's not winning it this year, guaranteed. I know. Anyway. Went straight to the Gold Coast for some chips. Um... <laughs> Lucky Hunter, right? We here's the funny thing. Somebody offered us up David Zaharakis for Lucky Hunter, and Chris said, "Do that deal." I did, and we did that deal. We did. We still won. No, we didn't. Yeah, we won. The, we won that eight. Oh, we won the we yeah. won the game, Chris, but we lost overall. Lucky Hunter averaged one hundred two point three. Mm. Huge. Uh, a couple of years ago, he started off the season really well, averaging 100 and then fell off a cliff a little bit. But Which is um, That was a year I actually... Um, yeah, you, I, you I went really it. well that year because I actually had him as a mid-pricer. Yes. Um, and I, that's and the year out. I finished 400. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's his best return in Supercoach. He had 1100s, including 7, 114 plus. So he had a pretty good ceiling to this year. So he had a 142, a 146, a 155. And his final four, he averaged 134. So, uh, Lucky Hunter, I am not against it. If you like watching little guys running around, not for, for standard, for no, draft. for draft. Yeah, surely. I'm not against it if you want to go for I, a little guy. I won't. The little, I think that his, the his role is going to get worse this year. There's too much people. So like a 90, 90, flat, 90 flat average? Uh, it's, yeah. So I'll pick him up at, say, what, 90, <laughs> yeah, 90, maybe 95 or whatever. Someone will pick him up early because people are stupid. Yeah, right. Uh, Mitch Wallace is the next one. He's 91.9 average, <laughs> uh, forward mid. We said, I've seen seagulls get closer to the ball than Hunter. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Penalty bounced the, the ball on seagull. I'll, pa- I'll pay that, Good. Swiss. Uh, so Mitch Wallace, 91.9 uh, average, forward mid. He's 498k. The problem was he was on Bevo's shit list a bit last year. And there was talk about him not even staying. He didn't play much midfield at all. Played him forward yeah, he, a lot. Uh, he kicked goals, though. He, he kicked, did. He kicked a few. I, another one that, I mean, they've just got that many types of this player, right? Yeah. You had so many inside ball winners that... I mean, it's great that he can win his own ball. He should have gone, in my opinion. I think that um, he wanted to stay and fight for his place. Yep. He had to go. <coughs> so um, I'll be concerned I'm about his role. I'm interested to see what's happening. I don't know if he even plays everywhere. Well, he relied on goals and goal assists, and he only had low twenties for disposals. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but that being said, ninety-one point nine average, not a bad return, particularly for draft. I don't see him going back to the hundred average he was. No. Unless something drastically changes. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair so, cool. like, I like him. I wish he got more mid time, but with the Bulldogs, it's just so many of those types. Yep. It's hard to pick. Agreed. Especially if you're running a draft before you get to see anything. It's just like you might as well just pick and hope. True. Pick a name out of a hat. Oh, I got Lucky Hunter. <laughs> or, you know, whatever. Uh, Mitch Wallace. Uh, okay, so mid prices. Well, there are three mid prices. Uh, we'll start with the Tom Lupatore, who Chris already touched on. Yep. 300k midfielder. Uh, he did. He looked really good, actually, before going down round one. And, like, pre season, yeah, he, he looked went like in, he was He flying. went down the JLT, didn't he? Uh, I thought it was. Was it JLT? Round... I think it was JLT 2. Yeah. So he had played the first JLT. Uh, going second. down before round one. So he. He looked really good in the preseason. Looked good in yeah, the JLT, yeah. and then yeah, he's having a ripper. Uh, and could, it was early in the game too. I think it was at like some like ridiculous regional ground, and he just slid off. And my only concern is that's now his second knee. It's not my only concern. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, at three hundred k, you can afford to take a punny. I think even last year, people got on it were, were wanting to get on him, and he was three eighty or so. Yeah, this year is three hundred. I'm surprised he's not in more teams at this point. He's on my side. Um. I've been looking at him heavily, but I mean, the only reason I'm looking at him is I'm looking at him as a stepping stone. Um, there are others that are slightly more expensive that you can get that could have potential keeper status. So if you're looking at a mid pricer, you've got you've got to choose them because they're a stepping stone, and therefore they've got to be able to make up enough money to do so um, and make it worth your while, or they've got to be able to have the potential to stay in your side for the entire year. If you can't see either of those two, then do not get involved with them. Cool. So those Are guys are Aaron Hall. Well, yes and no. I don't. He's not going to be a keeper. No way, because he gets injured at some time during the year, guaranteed. So you're going to have to trade him out of your side, which means that he's going to be a cash cow. But he's actually not going to be a cash cow. I'm surprised Miles is four hundred grand. I'm surprised Miles is in that many sides. 
I like Miles. Oh, no, I think people... he'll be a mid in that side, but... I think people love him because it's like, you know, they're, I mean, he's a shoe in for a 90 to 95 average, right? You reckon? Yeah, he's probably going to get it. I don't think Miles is a terrible pick. I just think, he, for me, is like it's 44k more when Libba could t- potentially do the exact same thing. Average 90 95k, but you make $44,000 more. Yeah, I'd probably go Miles over Libba, though, because he doesn't have two bung knees. Mm. Or, bung, or a bung knee twice. Anyway, that's the first the one. Um, he is battling around the Hannah's Hall and um, Miles yep. price range. So the next one is uh, JJ, average 85.8. He's 465k only because he's in that mid price range and he has averaged fairly high previously. Yep. Uh, can't, he couldn't handle the attention or the tag. So then they tried to play him forward to free it up. But he did average 100 his last eight rounds and then included a 32 in there. Yeah, he so got, he, went, he went like real big and small. He went 32. It's because they put him back behind the ball. And then he got a 139 and a 156 and went absolutely monster. And then he got some more attention again. So It's, it's classic, it's classic, classic, classic Bevo. Yep. I'm going to play my best halfback flanker forward of the ball. Yep. Why? Give him, give him some no confidence. Reasons. Give him some no confidence. Reasons. <laughs> Uh, okay, the next one is Hayden Crozier. So this is probably my pick, uh, my draft little smoky pick. I picked him up in the back end of the yeah, end of you draft. Yeah, and he killed and me. And he went well. Absolutely killed me. Uh, so he's, he averaged 79. He's a defender who's 428K. He averaged 97.4 the last 10 rounds when he was switched to defense, and he got a lot of rebounding 50s. So when you're looking at a guy who's only 79 on average, you could easily pick him up in between... You could pick him up at like an 80, 87 average, and I yep. reckon he'd be pretty happy. He's on my draft um, radar 100%. Yeah, and there's a lot of value there. Like I said, he's only on 79 on that. So not for standard for me, but for draft, 100%. Hayden Crozier is oh, my pick. I don't. Th- I, don't I wouldn't say he's a terrible <coughs> pick for standard. I mean, he's probably going up against Zach Williams, right? And there, there will be people out there that go big or heavy in the forward line or midf- and midfield and go light on defense trying to make up you know, a little bit of cash there. Do you think I don't think that's necessarily the right way to play. But... Do you think he's compensating for something? <laughs> um, Shrek joke. Yeah, I respect that. Thank you. Um, so look, I don't mind him as a, as I just I think there are better options. But if you're going with a stacked cheap defense, and you go Blakely, you know, let's say you go Blakely D one, D two Crozier, D three Zach Williams, and then rookies. Yeah, you've saved a lot of money, and it could be a potential way to go. You, you'd be able to stack your, your your midfield and forward line for sure. You save probably four or five hundred grand. It's an, at least another premium mid. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, draft specials. Uh, Liam Picken. If he can get on the track, he can provide value because no one's looking at him. Yep. Uh, so that's only an if, and he gets back training. He has had a whole year off and whatever else. So uh, Tom Libertori, if you want to take the risk, he could be a good bench option. But again, high risk injury. And if people do ACLs, they're more likely to do it again. And he's already done it twice. So um, then you've got Crozier, Dunkley, McLean, and JJ all have high risk reward. Just don't be surprised if their positions change weekly. Literally. So if here's my thing. If I'm looking at someone who's averaged 100 or 95 or whatever it is, and it's Dunkley and someone else, uh, and I've got a choice, and I'd choose the other one. Yep. Be- just because I just don't know what I'm going to get. Um, okay, so I've got ones to watch. I've got Suckling, who could really dominate kick-ins and score well. Problem is, he actually scored well already for the games he did play, so I'm not that into him. But again, one to watch for draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, one to watch is Bevo. <laughs> uh, I've literally got down here that crafty gypsy changes his mind each week. So, <laughs> crafty gypsy. Uh, and I only have one player to avoid, Chris. Can you guess who? Um, Just from the dogs, one player to avoid. Tom Boyd? Coming from a, a Brisbane uh, fanatic. Oh, Josh Shaki. Shaki! And I've got down here, it's hard to say, but Shaki, I still hate you. And that is the most talentless Is it? Pick. He's the most talentless pick two of all time. I don't think I've ever seen him do one single thing that was good. On an AFL field, yeah, have, right. you, have you seen? Have, like, uh, why care if he goes? Oh, no, he, he, was took, he, took a, he took a mark fifty meters out and slotted it once. <laughs> I did that in juniors, but an under sixteens once. Big forwards take time. I mean, Tom <laughs> Tom Boyd is still trying to spend that paycheck, and he's not getting there. <laughs> it takes time. Do you reckon Shaq is how upset? Is, how Do you reckon Shaq is upset? Well, hang on, he got a million dollars a season. What am I worth? That's true. Nah, well, I mean, he spent Tom Boyd, Tom, you got to remember, Tom Boyd got them a premiership. 
That is true. Respect. And yeah. he should have won that. The Norm Smith at 100 to 1. He should have won that Norm Smith. Should have won. My cousin yeah. put five bucks on that. Devastated. Totally, should have been totally worth it. Anyway, last any last comments? Chris? Uh, no, nah, well, look, we want to thank you guys for uh, sticking by us for the Team by Team series. Yes, again, apologies for the light and the sound, but um, look, yeah. we got through it. We finished up, and we'll get this out there. And when Chris gets back, we will start to look at... Uh, probably a little bit more positional, so we'll do uh, our top tens and run through that stuff as well. Yep. A few more crafty things, and then we'll heading into the JLT. We'll then do some analysis on the rookies that have actually reared their heads. Yeah. One thing we want to do this off season is we want to do a, a, a special pod purely dedicated to rating your teams. So um, everyone that wants to come on Twitch and put their team up, we can actually rate their team live and give you give you constructive criticisms and feedbacks. Like on a little flash mob, like boom, we flash up their team. Yeah, but we'll analyze it, hundred percent, pump and dump. And it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really interactive. Can we name it that? The pump and dump. The pump and dump team analysis. Sure. Why not? Well, you bring them up. Every, we we look at everybody's it. Everybody's right? doing it. We bring it up. We look at it. We analyze it, move it on, pump and dump team no, analysis. I think it's great. Yeah. Is, that, does that, is that wrong? Is that e- episode 73, <laughs> pump and dump analysis. Is, no, that, is that wrong? Who knows? I don't think it is. No, it's fine. We're good. We want to get through it quickly. We want yeah. to pump through it and then we want to... And if you've got any other ideas um, for some podcasts that are upcoming, um, let us know. We'd yep. love... Hit us up either on our socials or... Let us know. We mostly just make We also have up. an email. I don't know if, if anyone uses email to communicate with people like us, but... Do you, um, do you check our email? I do. I it, check out Facebook. I get notifications for it all day. And um, Twitter. It's supercoachinsider at gmail.com. So if you do want to... Uh, email us and, and yeah, yeah, you can as or well. Or Facebook or Twitter, you can send through some stuff there as well. But we'll keep you up to date with that because Chris has to bugger off for two weeks. It's true. So we'll talk later on. And thanks again for sticking with us. Peace out, community. Peace. Cheers. Happy Australia Day. <laughs>